Well, I have a day off here and we're going to be doing some burbot fishing with some group of four. So I got to get some, uh, some of my rods reeled up with some heavier line and I don't like braid while I'm uh, ice fishing. So basically I'm just uh, adding some monofilament. We're going to use 14 pound mono and we're adding that to our braid just to top it up. And I'm just going to show you how to uh, get the memory of the uh, line a lot quicker than just letting it sit for a few months. So when you're out fishing and you open your spool, it doesn't like spool up on you. But I'll show you that here. We're just going to spool up this reel. So I'm going to show you how to do a line to line tie as well. Very simple and tricky at the same time. You just uh, cross the lines over like that. I uh, usually start with the braid and then you just uh, make a loop and you have to go around both lines. I do four times with the braid. So then you got this loop here and then you just pull that tight, turn it around and you make your loop with the monofilament. Pull that tight, and then you just cinch those together. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then trim off the excess. Not that one, <clears throat> this one. And then you spool her up. You don't need to spool too much line. We're gonna be fishing in about 30 to 40 feet at most. So that's what we're gonna add, 30, 40 feet. If you do hook a huge fish, you still have all this braid that it could take if you do hook that 40 pounder. Now we're just gonna add the line here. And there it is. You see what happens if I let go here. It'll just unravel on you. So now we're gonna Make sure it's tight when it's on the reel. Cinch her up. And you want to take the reel off, the spool off the reel. I got one more I did there and it's just starting. There we go. So I've got the water up to about 72 degrees Celsius. And I got more reels here. We're gonna put them in and we're just gonna let them sit for a few minutes. Take them out and make a cold bath for them. I don't like to get them past that just for uh, if you make the monofilament too hot, it can affect it, so yeah. And then our cold bath, just to cool them down real quick. All you gotta do, your reels will be ready for use. Lincoln's talking in the background, but that is okay. So if you're having problems with your memory on your line, especially heavier line, it's good to just soak it in some hot water for a while. And that should help at least if you don't want to get it too hot. You choose your own temperature and go from there. But I am heading out tonight and I'm gonna do some burbot fishing in my ice shack rental because I finally have a few days off and it's not being rented. And then I get to work on it a little bit and do some fishing. All right, it is the evening, it's nine o'clock. Got here a bit late, but uh, basically just sleeping here tonight in my rental shack and do a little bit of burbot fishing. And we're gonna be fishing tomorrow with my buddy named Wade. 14 pound test, trialing Excel. And we did the line memory on it. So we're using that tonight and it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna show you what we're using for bait for burbot, pretty simple. And there it is. I sell this as well, Cisco's, Lake Diefenbaker Cisco's. You just want to put the headpiece on, nice J-hook, 
And then we have a swivel and a sliding bullet weight. And this is gonna be our second line we're putting out tonight. Today we are drilling 10 inch holes with our new Ion G2, six amp. And look, I just marked a fish there. So yeah, basically we're just gonna leave this on bottom here. And what we're gonna do is pull down maybe like four feet, five feet of line, close bail, loosen the drag. We don't want too loose a line, too heavy a line. Pretty much it. Lots of slack line. Burbot's gonna grab it, pull it down, suck it down, and we're here to keep Burbot. So if we catch one, it's gonna go on the frying pan. So, <clears throat> how do we know if we have a bite at night? I have this here. So I've got lots of slack line just ran down the, the rod into a trip mechanism there. And we have our pager set up. So what's going to happen is the fish is going to pull the line and then my pager will beep and let me know that there's a fish on or a fish bit. Simple as that. So we don't have to really ever watch the line at night. We just wait till that beeps and then we can go out and reel our fish in. Fish on. Look at that. There's a fish on it. Let's just turn that off. Everything's nice and relaxing. Nothing to be stressed about. Let's put this here. And here it is. And it is not a 6-7 pounder, it is a 2 pounder. Oh. Little guy, I think what we're going to do is see how deep he took it. If not, we're going to keep him and this could be our breakfast. And there it is, little dude. Fish on in the shack. Let's see if I can videotape this. Here she comes. Doesn't feel big at all. Another, another little guy. Not bad. This guy didn't take it deep, so we're going to probably let him go. And there he is. Took a little piece of Cisco. This one's going back. Bye bye. Well, got a couple burbot. It's about almost 11 o'clock. Shack for the first time. Not bad. Got everything to myself. And I'm catching bourbon. Haven't really even tried. Just been cleaning and I gotta swap that battery over there. And I got my bed set up. It is bedtime. And I got my pagers on. So I may be broken sleep tonight. Be waking up catching burbot all night and I'll try to get that on video. And right when I turned off the camera, I got a fish on. So. Cut off. Well, I got like 20 minutes of sleep and my pager's on. And it looks like there might be a fish on here. Oh. 
Still biting. Good night, everyone. Wake up in the morning, I'll have a bourbon on in my shack, probably. 6.40, and then we've got a whole day of fishing tomorrow. Good night. Five o'clock. We got a better one on here. I'd say that's about five, six pounds. I think that's the last one we're going to catch. And in the morning, we're going to head out to a uh, different spot for some walleye and get some more fishing done.